Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Akiba Rubinstein Saga. This time I would like to show you the new tournament Akiba played. Uh, of course, he won Ostende 1907 together with Ossip Bernstein. Uh, now Karlsbad, the first edition of the tournament. And this tournament uh, was always, you know, uh, full of the very, very strong players. But we had only four uh, editions of this tournament before the Second World War. So uh, very sad that the tradition edition, you know, was not held and then um, we didn't have more editions of this tournament. Uh, however, very, very respectable tournament and four editions full of really great players. For now, I would like to show you the picture, official picture uh, from the bulletin of the um, of this tournament. So uh, as you already see, we have a couple of faces we should know, but I'm not going to tell you uh, about them. If you try to find um, the Akiba Rubinstein or other players, please drop the comment. I will write all the names uh, in the description. So if you are interested, you can check over there. And if not, then just try to guess as many chess players as you can uh, from this picture. Very, very interesting. Uh, this is the best quality I could find in Internet. Uh, if you also have any better, uh, you can post the link also in the, in the comment. Uh, and I would like to show you the first game Akiba Rubinstein play uh, in this tournament. So he definitely wanted to win this tournament. He was already a very strong player, according to the chess metrics, number five in the world with the ranking 2724, 24 years old, so also very experienced player. And in this game, uh, he's going to play as white and his opponent, Aaron Nimcovic, but only 20 years old Aaron Nimcovic, one of his first tournament, uh, according to chess metrics. 2585 so definitely not the favorite of this game and in this game he's gonna play as black i show you already one of the games played in ostende which uh, akiba rubinstein won uh, easily so definitely uh, Aaron Nimcovic was not the favorite. So without further ado, let's see what happened in this game. It's very instructional game where probably you can learn something from this. Uh, and it's also appear in some very important books. Like, for example, my system of Aaron Nimcovic. We have d4, d5, knight f3. Uh, we have e6, c4 and c5. So Taras defense on the board. C takes on d5 very early. E takes on d5 and now knight c3 knight c6 uh, and here let's stop for the moment we could have g3 which is called rubinstein system and out of about 4000 games in the database nowadays in the 21st century 3000 more than 3000 are g3 so g3 is the rubinstein system just for your information but at that time in 1907 rubinstein went for bishop f4 which of course it's um, it's also okay we have c takes on d4 knight takes on d4 and we have another example of isolated queen spawn and um, but now rubinstein plays against now we have bishop b4 and this position is very very tricky actually we have the commentary during the years uh, a lot of people commented this game and um, everybody said okay just for the beginners if you think that knight b5 is a very strong move because you can pin it's not really the truth however this is very tricky because you know the masters at that time didn't have uh, the engine so they couldn't really check all the lines uh, and they uh, just said after d4 you cannot play knight c7 because you lose the game and you can actually try to pause the video and find the winning continuation for uh, for black. It's nothing fancy. It's not the main line. However, it's also a very, very interesting. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? Actually, we have one game in the database. So the players uh, maybe knew that game or maybe uh, or maybe they found it on the over the board. Uh, but this is winning move. Queen c7 is winning. And the point is that after bishop c7, we're going to ha have uh, d takes on c3. Sorry, d takes on c3. And now there is no way that white can do anything. There is completely no way as the knight, for example, controls d8. So what are the options? a3, a3 is losing because c2 attacking the queen and also uh, checking 
So for example, A takes on B4 uh, and after exchanging, what do we have here? Two pieces of white and black have three pieces. So definitely winning. Queen C2, making a space for the king doesn't work as well. C takes on B2, king D1 and now the rook is uh, without the protection. So again, uh, black have two extra pieces and of course a very easily uh, game. Bishop b4 now, uh, trying to maybe uh, stop this check this way, also doesn't work after c2. Uh, again, we have the attack on the queen, so bishop d2, uh, c takes on d1, and again, two extra pieces for black, of course, are enough to win the game. However, there is one problem. After d4, the engine says that a3 is enough to win the game, and now white is winning. So, Rubin Einstein already could go for this idea. He probably didn't calculate as well as the engine because now after D takes on C3, A takes on B4, there is completely nothing uh, and this is still a threat. For example, C takes on B2, Knight C7, and then you cannot take it. I mean, you can. You exchange the queen for the knight and the, and the rook, and of course, white is winning here. Uh, or you can move the king to E7 uh, just to equalize the material, but only material, because after queen D8, knight D8, rook B1, uh, let's say bishop F5 attacking this rook, rook B2, and after rook C8, the knight is defended. So what white can do is just play e4. Uh, the pawn cannot be taken because of the pin and winning the, the material. So bishop d7 and then knight d5 and beautiful position for white. Uh, the material is equal, but look at these pieces. Uh, all of these pieces are completely cramped and white have very, very happy uh, pieces developed and uh, very active position. So this is also uh, winning for white, of course. Uh, but Rubinstein didn't go for this knight b5, but it's also interesting that during the years um, a lot of uh, players actually uh, try to analyze this game. This is a very famous game. This is also in, in my system, as I said, and uh, try to find the ways. And they, they stated that this doesn't work, but actually it works. So uh, very, very interesting stuff. Knight f6. No, e3 first by Akiba Rubinstein. Knight f6 by Aaron Nimcovic. Uh, we have knight c6 and b takes on c6. So now what we learn, the new thing. These are called the hanging pawns. And hanging pawns uh, can be extremely dangerous. Uh, this this looks like okay support for the pawn but also this is the weakness and now what is the strategy for white to play against the hanging pawns we have to blockade these pawns uh, and m put them in the, the static position the static position is like this one it looks like okay very safe for for black uh, however the idea is to block them uh, and then uh, circle them and circle them and then uh, eliminate them. So that's the roughly the idea. What black want to do is make this hanging pawns as much active as possible. So c5 is the move black want to do. Uh, and now the pawns next to each other have a lot of energy uh, and a lot of power. So um, in some games they can uh, break through by, by d4, sometimes c4, and both of these moves can be extremely dangerous. White definitely doesn't want any of them. Uh, and now, also interesting, nowadays queen a4 is the main idea. This is the engine moves and um, this is played nowadays. However, we also have the move bishop d3. And now, very interesting information, uh, if you check the historical games, all the credits goes to Paul Keres, um, Soviet Grandmaster from Estonia, and a lot of Soviets actually started from Botvinnik, uh, analyze the games of Akiba Rubinstein and copied a lot of um, his ideas. So some part of the Soviet school uh, came from the Akiba uh, Rubinstein games, and Botvinnik especially, he criticized Akiba Rubinstein a lot. Uh, he didn't want, you know, other chess players study his games, so he said a lot of bad things about Akiba uh, and this way he just um, thought okay maybe others will not follow his games they will everybody will go for Capablanca, Aljechin, Lasker uh, but then he was very smart and then he became the world champion as well 
So very interesting behavior by Botfinic, but also later we see a lot of games uh, of Smyslov who implement the, the Rubinstein ideas and so on. So Bishop D3, the carriage variation, however, as you see, 70 years earlier, adapted already by Akiba Rubinstein before he actually invented G3 uh, Rubinstein variation. Also, uh, also another another idea. We have the castle. We have the castle, and now bishop d6. And we have annotation uh, of of Nimzovic. He analyzes his games as well. Of course, if you want to improve in the chess, you have to analyze your own games. Uh, and he said that he don't want these uh, pawns to gonna be uh, blocked and encircled and, and eliminated. So he didn't want have this bishop around also he want to exchange the uh, dark square bishop because now his pawns are on the light squares so the bishop potentially could come to one of these squares and block and make the blockade so exchanging the bishop is of course great and now if bishop g5 uh, what Nimcovic wanted to do is rook b8 first attacking the pawn on b uh, two b3 would have to be played if you play uh, queen c2 that would be the blunder because the queen covers g4 i hope you see that already uh, if the queen c2 then we're gonna have this tactic winning the pawn you cannot take the the bishop uh because of uh this exchange so uh, you're gonna lose the queen and your king gonna be in the troubles so not this way, b3 would have to be played and then uh, what Nimzovic wanted to play is bishop uh, e5 and after rook c1 defending the knight, then queen d6 supporting c5 and making this powerful pawns uh, and then they would uh, start to push maybe d4 maybe c4 uh, and also this uh, queen d6 would come with the tempo on the h2 so that was the main idea so rubinstein knows that he played bishop g3 we have bishop g3 h takes on g3 and now c5 so nimsovic uh, just continue with his plan we have rook c1 and now bishop e6 developing the last piece uh, and here we have also a lot of commentators that e4 could be played i could be very strong because now black would probably would be forced to play something like d4 uh, but then uh, knight a4 uh, with a lot of pressure on this pawn and um, th this pawn also could be very easily uh, blocked for now it can be uh, just taken so not much can be done here uh, can be pushed but of course it's lost however the problem is Nimcovic said that okay he calculated that and he wrote the annotation if e4 is played then he simply would equalize with d takes on e4 uh, and what next knight e4 Okay, then he gonna play c4 first, this pawn is lost anyway, and after exchanging uh, all the pieces, uh, bishop c4, then bishop c4, rook c4, and he just equalized a completely symmetrical pawn structure. Okay, there is a little bit messed for the for the white, but it doesn't really matter, the end game uh, would be probably drawn, and um, that's all what could happen. So, this is why we have queen e4. Akiba Rubinstein, this is the first game of the tournament, and Akiba wants to win against you know a very promising uh, Aaron Nimcovic but uh, he only 20 years old so definitely 24 years old Akiba uh, want to win against a younger opponent who is not so successful as him uh, we have queen b6 and here Nimcovic wrote it looks like okay I'm gonna go for d4 but in the truth my plan is go to c4 so it looks like very very passive move however this was his idea why uh, b3 was the best move in the position this is what uh, akiba rubinstein should play just block this this c4 and then try to attack these pawns so that was his idea however he went for queen e3 and queen e3 is not that great because now we have c4 and it looks like this hanging pawns are very very passive and also we have very huge weakness on the d5 okay this weakness can be attacked very easily now because we have bishop e2 the bishop gonna come here the rook's gonna be doubled here uh, and white gonna gonna win the game uh, so aaron nimzovic first play um, a5 
pushing the pawn. Now we have rook f to d1 as planned. We have queen b4. Now this was the idea of e5. Uh, and now white shouldn't take the, the queen. That would make no sense, of course, as probably you see that already. The knight has nowhere to go, probably something like uh, b5. But then rook a2. This pawn is also very difficult to defend. And now black has really powerful pawns in the center on the queen side. That would be completely lost uh, for white. So after queen b4, Akiba went, of course, for rook d4. And now also queen a3 isn't that great because if black decide to exchange the queens, then after b takes on a3, uh, rook a to b8, first controlling the open, the only open file, and after bishop f3, going after this pawn, rook f to d8, and now rook c to d1, and white gonna have very comfortable game, this pawn is lost, it cannot be defended, uh, because the knight also controls b5, so uh, the, the rook cannot come to b5, uh, and this shouldn't be any problem, uh, for white to continue the game. So this is why we have rook f to d8 first, now we have rook c to d1, uh, and now rook d7. We have also bishop f3, and now rook a to d8. And here uh, Aaron Nimcovich wrote a very famous quote about this position. This well knit position with its extraordinary economy and ideally posted forces is akin to a Greek work of art. Nothing should have been changed in this position, sipped in perfection. So uh, what he proposed here, just play king f1, uh, king f8, uh, king g1, king g8, and so on. And with a draw would have been a fit conclusion to the game. So this, in Aaron Nimcovich's opinion, should just end in the game. Nothing can be done here uh, because this pawn is the weakness, but it's defended uh, four times. It's attacked also um, four times. The queen stuck in the a3 uh, and it shouldn't be taken. Also, the queen shouldn't be exchanged. So just a draw. But as I said, Akiba want to win the game and he played knight b1, which Nimcovic commented, this upsets the balance and leads to the disruption of white's game. Uh, now we have rook b8, so going after the pawn. Uh, and now b3 wouldn't be that great because after uh, queen a3, knight a3, c takes on b3, uh, a takes on b3, rook b3, uh, black gonna play with this... Uh, past pawn so very comfortable game for black black stands slightly better uh, and really uh, should win that game uh, this is why we have a rook from the first rank go to d2 and now Nimcovic just exchanged the queens and he just noted that, uh, okay, uh, he can he could play rook d to b7, but this is just equalization and pretty good for white. For example, queen c3 and after queen c3, knight c3, uh, rook b2 uh, just exchanged um, most of the pieces, uh, then bishop d5 knight d5, knight d5, uh, and after rook a2, rook c4, of course the knight cannot be taken because of the checkmate on the, on the last rank, so probably something like a4, rook c5, maybe now g6, making some space for the king, uh, rook a5, and uh, yeah, and it looks like Nimcovic said, okay, this is a draw, the engine is more optimistic, saying like minus 1.3, so black can fight for the win, however, after, you know, playing a couple of moves, like a3, uh, e4, rook a1, uh, king h2, let's say a2, it's just too early also, uh, but even if, if, if you play this, on some point you have to play, um, there is no way that this rook can make a space, because it's always um, defended by the king, uh, so this pawn cannot promote is on the dark square, so it's not that easy. So it's a lot of uh, to play. Black maybe have a little advantage, but probably Aaron Nimcovich was right that this could be uh, only a draw. Uh, so he played queen a3. We have knight a3, of course, uh, and now rook d to b7 actually would be would be pretty bad because now it's guarded by the tactic uh, knight c4. Knight c4, and you cannot take the knight, uh, and this pawn gonna be lost as well. If you take the knight, there is, of course, the problem with rook d8 with the checkmate. So black would have to play knight e8, but then bishop b7 
and after exchanging uh, you can bring the king but you're gonna lose the knight and the game with extra rook of course it's winning so rook d to b7 was admitted by Nimsovic so uh, he analyzed this as well we have king f8 uh, and only now e4 we have d takes on e4 so finally Rubinstein actually destroyed that dangerous uh, pair of pawns but it's probably too late we have rook d7 knight d7 bishop e4 and now knight c5 attacking the bishop and now very difficult position for white this pawn c4 when i said uh, that nimcovic said that okay this pawn on c4 gonna be uh winning the point is that it's completely blocking the weakness on b2 so white have to try to defend this pawn and it's not that easy there is no space for the knight uh, there is a light square bishop so there is only rook which can defend uh, which is very uncomfortable for example the knight can um, come and help so uh, if bishop c6 is played which probably would be the best move in the position the problem is rook b4 defending that pawn bishop b5 and now knight a4 attacking this pawn and if white tries to bring another attacker to this to this pawn then uh, black also gonna bring another defender and the position would be completely crazy uh, but nothing can be much what white can play is something like bishop a4 rook a4 rook c2 trying to go after but simply rook before and then bring the king and try to uh, play the game continue and it's very difficult now for white to activate the pieces uh, to win or draw the position like that white have to activate the pieces but uh, what to do where to bring the knight uh, where to bring the rook it's it's completely lost position uh, this pawn is still under attack and this passed pawn would win the game so it's it's very difficult it's probably lost position as well so Rubinstein didn't care about the pawn he decided that rook d4 uh, would be better here but this is also losing now very simple knight e4 everything is forced rook e4 and then rook b2 winning the pawn now knight c4 winning this passed pawn which was very dangerous uh, but of course now we are gonna have rook a2 is possible but in our game we have rook b4 so um, Nimcovic want to exchange more pieces also exchange the rooks simplifying the position uh, to make you know as less possibilities for Rubinstein to win as possible uh, knight d6 we have rook e4 knight e4 and now bishop a2 and this position uh, was in the my system of Aaron Nimcovic in the chapter if you are interested there is the chapter of basic endgames about the centralization of the king so now the king is on the f8 and this king is on the g1 it's the huge difference uh, first thing first the king cannot be brought to f1 this is the first problem of akiba rubinstein if he go king f1 immediately we're gonna have bishop c4 with check now the king cannot go to e2 so this is the you can go back to g1 but it doesn't make sense king e1 and then bishop d5 gonna win the pawn on g2 and that would be two pawn up uh, and that's enough to win the game and if you try to defend by something like f3 you are also losing this king also uh, gonna win all of these pawns uh, very easily and the game white have to try to go for this pawn and that's uh, that's just you know winning very easy win this is why first we have knight c3 but now bishop c4 controlling f1 so white are in troubles in bringing the the king making centralization this is why Nimcovic added it to the to the chapter we have f4 um, and now king e7 so his king is already on e7 and white king still on g1 we have king f2 king d6 we have king e3 we have king c5 king c5 and now king is heading to b4 uh, too fast the king was very very fast g4 we have king b4 and now king d4 and now the point is that uh, if black king is on d6 then probably that would be uh, possible to defend that game uh, maybe the, maybe very difficult but maybe that would uh, be possible however the problem with the king on b4 uh, there is no way that actually white can do anything 
Uh, A4, that would be the blunder, that, that is the last trap by, by Rubinstein, but A4 was not played. Of course, knight A4, and now white is winning the game, can go after these this pawns and win the game. So uh, this is why Nimcovic played bishop B3 first, and now he gonna win with this pawn. Not much can be done, Rubinstein tried G5, we have A4, we have knight B1, uh, we have bishop E6 taking under control G4. So Nimcovic played very, very precisely. Uh, he wants to put his uh, opponent into the Zugzwang, so we have G3, and only now now king b3, we have knight c3, we have a3, uh, king d3, we have g6, and now Rubinstein uh, tries uh, king d4 and go after these pawns. Uh, however, now in this position, uh, everything is winning actually for, for black, even a2 exchanging the, the knight is winning, because white can only pick up this pawn and nothing more, uh, the, the king is too slow. However, we have even stronger move and we have acclamation a mark in the my system, uh, king c2. And now look at this complete Zugzwang and white doesn't have any moves uh, because these two squares are controlled by the by the black pieces so king cannot move and of course if white move this pawn then it's gonna be lost and uh, after knight a2 let's say uh, king b2 knight b4 king b3 king c5 uh, only now just exchange and after king d6 uh, we're gonna have bishop e6 and these two pawns will never pass through so the king has a lot of time to actually pick up both of the pawns and win the game this is the only pawn white can win so this is why after king c2 akiba rubinstein resign first game of the Karlsbad tournament so important for akiba rubinstein and he lost so very bad start in the tournament but i will show you more games this was very educational and uh, it found a way uh, to appear in a lot of uh, chess books and uh, i hope you enjoy and i hope you found something for yourself how to play or maybe how not to play against hanging pawns very instructional uh, if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss other parts of akiba rubinstein saga and more games from this very important Karlsbad tournament press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one